Okay, so welcome to Sunday, December 18th textbook arbitrage class. This is our fourth class, and I've had a great opportunity to go over all the questions you sent in, uh, literally hundreds of questions, hundreds and hundreds of questions. Um, I spent most of the day yesterday catching up on everything, um, and it was a great opportunity because I get to see the things that, that I feel like you're doing wrong, the mistakes you're making, and also the things that, although you think certain things are a big issue, they're really not. And we're going to cover some of those today as well. All right. Um, we are recording this class. The recording is going now. And so we're ready to get started. Let me go out to our members area real quick. Got a couple of things to show you here. All right. So I've added a few things to the members area. First off, the class that we had on Friday. Wow, that was a phenomenal class. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have, you haven't watched it or you didn't get to come live. It's in the members area. Uh, live class number three, December 16, 2016, where I uh, showed you basically how to list every uh, how to list books from start to finish and how to pack your books and how to ship your books and everything. All right, yes, yeah, get people chiming in now saying that Friday was was awesome. Friday was great. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed that. We also uh, ran up against a couple of, of little unexpected issues, which is good because it gives me an opportunity to kind of show you how to solve those things. All right, so be sure if you haven't yet to go through and watch that class. Also, underneath that class, under the video, you're, you'll see condition notes. So this is a zip file that has uh, just the different condition notes that I use when I'm entering the condition for a book and these are just good for you to swipe in particular there is the text that you use that tells the buyer that uh, they're going to get the book let me open it up here so I can show you okay so right here and I've got a different one for each of the conditions very good good like new and acceptable um, so right here you can see fast this is very important always put this in your condition note as long as you're selling through FBA then you can do this fast shipping from Amazon qualifies for prime shipping and free standard shipping for orders over $49 that's the text that you should put in always at all I also include a non-smoking home if you if you're not a non-smoking home then don't say that but I always do that because I think if people are looking for books, if you've ever bought a book that had a smoky smell, you know what I'm talking about. All right, nothing against people who smoke, but, um, you know, if you can use that, then go ahead and use it. Okay. Uh, also, I added a class mind map. I didn't really have a mind map for class number three since it was mostly just demonstration, but I did add one, um, and it's – carried over here as well class three and it's just got your listing supplies so all the things that I told you that I use when I'm listing my uh, books with links to the different sources were applicable all right and I think that's pretty much it And if you're international, I'm still getting the question about how do I do this if I'm international. Be sure to watch the bonus training, how to sell if you're not in the U.S., okay? It's got all the details in there. And before you send a question about it, please watch the training and then go to the press service form. I'm sorry, the press service, the prep service form, which is right here. I'm getting questions that would be answered if you just went here and looked at it, okay? So be sure to review this form. Even if you're not ready to send in the book, review it, and it answers a lot of the questions that you'll have about the format. Okay, uh, let's get on with today's topics then. Okay, first, first off, the biggest mistakes. I want to go through the biggest mistakes I'm seeing. There's really three big ones that I'm seeing. And the, by far the biggest one is 
people are not searching deep enough within a category or you're only searching within the first category you come to. And I know this for a lot of people, well, not a lot, but I know that some of you are doing this because I'm, I got the same book sent in for me to review from three different people, the same exact book. Now, how can that be with, there's millions and millions of books out there on Amazon and hundreds of thousands of textbooks. How could it be that three people sent me the exact same book? Because it's the book that's on the very first page of one of the top categories. Um, you need to dig deeper into the categories. Go deep, deep, deep. And I'm going to be showing you in, in, during this class some more techniques for searching. So, um, so I'll show you how to go deep. Um, Biggest mistake number two is that you seem to be ignoring the current sales rank. Um, you know, our sales rank maximum, 350000 right? And then if you can have a good inclination that you're in textbook season, which is, you know, start of January, that if your sales rank is is higher than this, but you you feel it's going to to drop dramatically during the textbook season, then you can um, you know you can use that as your as your barometer. However, if we go back, let's look at the chart here. And in this mind map, if you go up, you see I got tons of information in here uh, that we've covered in past classes. But I want you to look at this chart here. Okay, this chart is golden for you because it tells you how many of each book is going to sell based off the bestseller rank. All right, so I get um, like people will send in a book and the book will be ranked at, at over a million in ranking right now. And typically for a book that's ranked over a million, you know, it's going to be really tough for that book to, to get down into a range that's going to be a good range by January. Uh, but even if you see the book do that, you know, let's say the book dips down and it shows that it's going to be around 40,000, 40 or 50,000 in January. Well, that's only going to sell between one and 10 copies a day. Okay, so it's somewhere around that area, probably about five copies a day. So if there is a bunch of FBA offers out there already, let's say there are, you know, 25 or 30 FBA offers out there already that are priced lower than what you're pricing at, then they're going to get sold first probably. And so if you're looking at selling a book that's with a bestseller rank of a million and a million and three, unless there's not a whole lot of FBA offers, then I would skip that book. And we'll probably run into an example like that today. I don't have a specific example. But um, as I'm doing some research today, I'll probably run into something I can show you. All right, so pay, pay attention to that sales rank. Third big thing I'm seeing people talk about is, or wanting to do, is buying FBA offers to resell as FBA. So from the very beginning of this class, I said we've got to concentrate on fulfilled by merchant offers. So we buy the fulfilled by merchant, and then we put it back on and sell as fulfilled by Amazon. The reason for that is because Amazon actually has a, a policy against you buying it through FBA and then reselling through FBA. It's in their prime account policy. So as far as I know, it's not a seller. It's not a, a problem with a seller account. The problem is with the prime account. Okay, so they could suspend your prime account if you violate this this policy. Now, I've seen people do it before and, you know, do it multiple times and many times and not have any problem at all. But I like to err on the side of caution, especially when I'm dealing with Amazon. So please limit your purchases to FBM offers only. If it's something that's just too good to pass up, you know, I've seen those before too, where for some reason the FBM price is just, I mean, the FBA price is just really, really good. You know, if it's, if it's a great book, then get it and sell it on eBay or sell it in a different marketplace. But eBay's eBay's the second best for selling books. All right? Especially if it's a textbook, if it's highly ranked, then it will sell on eBay just about as well as it would sell on Amazon. All right? So that's always an option for you to do. 
I'm going to actually add that. You can buy on Amazon, FBA, and sell on eBay. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to talk about the biggest non-issues. The biggest things that I feel people are really worried about that aren't that big of a deal. Uh, number one, long-term storage fees. So someone sent in this question last week, and it's a great question. And you hear it all the time, and i got several other people asking about it as well. So I went out and I did sort of a case study on it and a sort of an example um, and got a bunch of information. I've never worried about storage fees. It's never been something that um, – that's been a whole that's cost me a whole lot of money so I went out and did the research and found out you know what does Amazon say about storage fees and uh, let's do some examples of how much it's going to cost you if a book doesn't sell after say six months all right so this is this is sort of the the gist of it here storage fees are charged after a book has been in the Amazon warehouse for six months or more. You're, now, because we're dealing right now, especially with just textbooks, textbooks where I'm saying that, you know, the ranked at 350 or better, then those books should sell quickly. But even if they didn't, any fee would be small. All right, so here's what Amazon has to say about long-term storage fees. On February 15th and August 15th of every year, FBA conducts an inventory cleanup. On these dates, inventory that has been in the Amazon fulfillment centers between 6 and 12 months are at, assessed a long-term storage fee of 11.25 per cubic foot. All right, don't let that number scare you. We're going to do a we're going to do a calculation and show you exactly what it is. Okay, so let's kind of decipher this. If you're sitting in your books right now, then that's not going to be 6 months. February is not going to be 6 months. So the Next opportunity for you to be assessed a long-term storage fee would be in August. Actually, August the 15th is when they do their next assessment. So as long as you have books, as long as your books that are six months or older have sold by then, then there's no long-term storage fee. If they're out there in August and they haven't sold, then you're going to be assessed a long-term storage fee, or Amazon will give you the opportunity to dispose of your books or to um, to basically just get have them send them back to you, ship them back to you. You usually don't want to do that because it's going to cost you more to have them ship back to you than it's worth it. All right. Um, so anyway, it would actually be August before any of your books would be affected. Now, how much space does a book take up? There's a calculator right here. And you get this link is in, this link is actually right here. You just click that link. It'll take you to all the information about Amazon's inventory storage. All right, so you can read everything about it here. But right here is where you can calculate the cost for any item. All right, so let's just take a regular old textbook and I actually measured a couple just to kind of get an average an average measurement um, 9 by 11 by one and a half inches okay and then click on calculate volume and fees okay so this is the volume 0 0.086 let me pull up a calculator All right, finally, finally found one there. All right, there's a the calculator. So our fee is 0.0, I'm sorry, it's 11.25 uh,
okay? That's per cubic foot, and we're going to multiply that by this number right here, 0 0.086, and that comes out to 96 cents. So 96 cents would be the long-term storage fee for that book if that book stayed in the warehouse for more than six months. Um, if you send it in, if you were to send that book in by the end of this month, so December, January, February, March, April, May, July, August, it's actually eight months because the next assessment doesn't come up until August. All right, so that's actually in August is the second textbook season. So you actually got the you know, a, a big part of the second textbook season to sell that as well. So that's why I'm saying it's just not that big of a deal. Uh, if you want to calculate different different uh, storage fees, just use this calculator right here. If it's a little bit bigger, let's see if it's two inches. 0.115. That would be a dollar and twenty nine cents for one that's really you know, much bigger. Okay, so that's the long-term storage fees, and that's why I'm saying it's not really a big deal. Don't don't even worry about it right now. It's not going to affect you until August at the earliest. Okay, next thing. Next thing that I, people are concerned about is what happens if I receive a book that is unsellable? And we've already had one instance where someone ordered a book and found out after the book arrived, the book had on the cover of it uh, not sellable in the U.S. Well, the person, the, the company that sold that book is not supposed to do that, um, but the solution is you can get a refund. When you're the buyer on Amazon, when you're buying from Amazon or from a third party, you are in the driver's seat. Amazon is very, very strict with their sellers, and if everything is not just right, then you can get a refund. And if that seller doesn't comply, then Amazon will suspend their account. Um, if you receive a book that's not sellable for whatever reason, maybe the condition is much, much, much worse than what the condition was when you bought it. Maybe it's water damaged. Maybe it's missing pages or, or something like that. Then what you do is you go to you want to message the seller using the Amazon messaging system. Okay, you always want to use the Amazon messaging system when communicating with the seller or even with the buyer if you're on the the other end because then there's a record of it, and Amazon can go back and review that record if they need to. All right, so here are here's how you do it. If you need to return a book, go to your Amazon account, log into your account, and then click on account, and then under your account, click on your orders. Okay, when you click on your orders, you're going to get a list of all your orders, just like that, and then the one that you need to refund, click on get help with order. It'll be this uh, button will be right out to the right of that product. All right, then you'll come to a screen that looks like this, and it'll say package didn't arrive, damaged or defective item, different from what I ordered, no longer needed or other issue. I suggest you click on other issue. And once you click on other issue, then it gives you a text box here that you can just explain to the, to the seller what the problem is. I would not tell the seller more information than they need to know. Just tell the seller, hey, this book is not in the condition that you described. Therefore, I would like a full refund. Um, this book was sold on the U.S. marketplace, but it plainly says not sellable in the U.S. And that seller, by the way, what he was doing is he was trying to pass off an international textbook as a U.S. textbook, and he was trying to be really slick about it. So just describe the issue and click send. 
Uh, and again, you tell the seller you would like to return the book for a full refund. And then you wait for two days. If the seller, after two days, the seller does not respond, then you can submit an A to Z claim with Amazon. Now, what does A to Z mean? That's Amazon's term, term for their guarantee. Basically, it means that you're covered. Anything from A to Z, you are covered. And just click on this link right here. It'll take you out to this page, and you can read more about the A to Z claim conditions. You can see that it covers everything. All right? And then when you're ready to file it, wait two days. You know, give the, give the seller an opportunity to make good on the problem. If he doesn't, then come here. And you can click on right here to file a claim, go to the file, an A to Z guarantee claim, and just follow the directions there. Hopefully, it won't get to that point. Um, any, I've never had to submit an A to Z uh, guarantee claim. The seller has always come through. And what normally happens is they will say, just keep the product. I'm going to refund it anyway because they want to make you happy. They don't want to. They don't want. They don't want to be on the wrong end of uh, of Amazon. They don't want. To, they don't want Amazon to get Lucille after them. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to find my screen here. I've got two screens going on here. Okay. So that's how you deal with that issue, and that's going to happen. You know, you're going to make mistakes. Um, the seller is going to make mistakes. Or it's just going to be something where you misread something, the, the, um, the, your analysis was wrong or whatever, and you realize that when you get the book in. Um, third biggest non-issue is people are concerned about pricing a book too high. All right, let me tell you my theory on that, especially with textbooks. You can price a book too high or you can price a book too low. It's very hard to get the price just right, right? But would you rather price the book too high and then later on determine that you're going to lower the price some? Or would you rather price the book too low and then someone come in and snag that book up and buy it? You can't go back to the buyer and say, hey, you know what? I sold that book too cheap to you. And so I want you, I need you to send me another 20 bucks because I sh really should have priced it. $20 higher. You can't do that, can you? So therefore, I say you should err on the side of pricing too high. And then if the book doesn't sell after a couple of weeks during textbook season, then lower the price down. Okay, uh, the next big non-issue that people seem to have is labels. Um, there are actually really three different labels. that you deal with with Amazon. The first one is the, the item label. And that's the label that is attached to the, the book or the item or whatever you're selling. In our case, book, you put it on the back of the book. I let Amazon handle this for 20 cents each. Okay, they're just going to charge you 20 cents for that. And that 20 cents comes out of your your uh, profit. So I don't think I've ever had a charge go to my credit card for the 20 cents. It just comes out of the profit they would have sent me. All right, I let Amazon handle doing this for 20 cents each. If you don't want to, then you can print the labels out and you can attach the labels it's the it's the Avery label and hang on a second and I will put that in the I will find the exact link for that so I just answered someone's question about that
Okay, these are just the standard Avery shipping labels. They're 3.333 by 4 inches. Box of 600 is $20.90. But again, let Amazon handle it. Okay, the next label is the shipping label. The shipping label is printed when you're preparing the shipment. Now, if you are international and you're sending your books to prep service, then um, we'll notify you when your books are ready to ship. We'll tell you what the weight is, and then you can enter that information and email us the label. Okay, very, very simple. Um, the third one is the FBA label, and it's printed out at the same time the shipping label is printed out. So I showed that. If you don't know what that is, just go back to the listing session, and I did uh, a couple of those so you can see what they look like. But it's basically, it's both of these fit on a 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, so they print out at once, and you just attach it to the box that you send in to Amazon. So that's really the only labels you have to worry about. Um, there was some confusion in the questions about when I went over listing books. There's a section on there. If you go back and watch the training, you'll see it where it asks you if you want to use Amazon's barcode. That's different than this label. Okay. What they're talking about there is using the item barcode that's on the back of any, pretty much any product. You can't do that if you're selling used products. And I explained that in the training, so go back and watch that. Okay, so that covers pretty much the biggest issues that people are having and the biggest mistakes that I see people making. So now uh, someone else sent in, and I'm sorry, I forgot, uh, I forgot who sent this question in, but it's a very, very good question about using Amazon using uh, Amazon's Visa card program or their um, Amazon Prime Store card. And what that allows you to do is with the Am let me go to the link here. With the Amazon, I did quite a bit of research on this too. With the Amazon Prime Store card, it gives you 5% cash back from your purchases on Amazon. Now, not cash back, but it, it takes that 5% and just puts it into your account and applies it against any, you know, any um, uh, expenses you have. So you can actually use this to help you fund your book business and get 5%. Basically, it's a 5% discount off of everything. Now, it also has another feature, so they've kind of combined two cards in one, and you can access promotional financing where if what you're buying is $149 or more, then you have six months to pay that off. And if it's $599 or more, then you have 12 months, uh, and if it's more than that, you have 24 months. All right, but I suggest you at least, and this is for Prime members only, unfortunately. You've got to be a Prime member to use this. But I suggest if you're a Prime member, go ahead and get this just for that 5% cash back. That's pretty awesome to be able to, to save 5% on every single purchase. All right, if you're not a Prime member or you can't be a Prime member or whatever, then you can also use the Amazon Visa card, and the link to that is right here. Okay, with the Amazon Visa card, you only get 3% cash back, but hey, it's better than nothing, right? And you don't have to be a Prime member to use it. You also get other discounts like at restaurants and things. Okay, so very good. That's uh, that, that was a, a great question that was sent in about those. I appreciate that, and um, I think everyone should go ahead and, and do that. All right, so now that's all the issues I wanted to cover. So let me go ahead and uh, pull up a browser and let's do some let's do some research. All 
All right, here's our browser window. I'm going to close this down. I want to show you a, another way to search that you might find a little little easier. Um, go to go to any book. All right, so I'm just going to go here. I'm going to go to the books category. All right, and then click on best sellers. Okay, and here you see the top 100. There's 20 per page, but there's the top 100 for every, I want to say for every single sub sub category. Um, and I say that because that way because I haven't checked every single one, but I believe it's in every single sub sub category. All right, so let's go down the textbooks. All right, and just choose one. And everyone seems to be choosing the ones up top, so I'm going to choose something different. I'm going to choose science and mathematics. Okay, um, and then so here you can see under science and mathematics, you see the top 100 here. But if you drill down some more, so let's just go to mathematics. There's a subcategory called mathematics. Let's go there, and then we see even more. Okay, and there's 100 there. And there's actually even more. You can drill down even further um, to algebra and trigonometry, calculus, geometry, statistics, and you see even more. And each one of those, there's a... 1 to 100 there as well. But this is really, really digging deep into that category. All right, so that's how you, that's how you kind of uh, navigate through these different categories here. There's statistics. Okay. And that will at least get you, if you do this way, it's at least going to get you into a category that everyone else isn't, isn't looking at. You know, if you just kind of choose one at random. All right. And I like to look through here and look for, for the items that have higher prices. Am I in textbooks? Yeah, this is textbooks. Okay. Okay. So like right here, unfortunately, we can't see the offer, different offers on here. Uh, we can only see the price. So I'm going to just go here and just kind of look to see what the offers are. Yeah, we don't have don't have anything there. Uh, 65 views from 40. All right, not really anything there. But anyway, this is how you go through and just look at these. Looking for the ones that have a high, and when I say high, I mean under 50, I mean over $50, uh, over $50 price, and this is the Amazon price here. And then looking in each one of those to find the books that have a lower fulfilled by merchant price, okay? So I actually spent about a half an hour before there's look at that one, $212.99. Let's see what that one is. I spent about half an hour or really about 20 minutes right before class doing this, and I'll show you what I what I came up with. Okay, so 139 used from 5561, and the price there is 212. So let's see what, what else we have here. Okay, so all right, so here is an interesting one. It's got one with with 60, 61, but the next one is 108. So it goes up quickly after that. So I would see if this one has um, has an excellent ranking right now. Yeah, it does. So that one that's selling at a low, low price under FBA is going to sell quick. This one right here is going to be gone very soon. 
So then this will be the low price. And right now you can get this for uh, 5561 plus 399. And actually a couple of them on there. So that's a pretty good one. Okay, so that's how you do that. And I think that method of search is a little bit easier. All right, uh, I'm going to bring up some that I found right before. Okay, religions of ancient Egypt and Babylon. I think this is one I pulled up because it's a special circumstance. An interesting one that, no, it's not this one. All right, but this one looks pretty good, though. All right, so it's got a bestseller rank of 384,000 right now. So let's see if that is going to improve. Yeah, this was one that was um, sort of sort of a little different. And I, I didn't see any. Notice here, I'm not seeing... You're not seeing anything on sales rank except one long straight line, and it looks like 15 million in sales rank. So for that, I want to I want to confirm this with Camel, 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 because that just doesn't look right. You know what I mean? 15 million. So I'm not sure how Camel, 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 and Keepa pull their data, but. They're getting data in a different in different ways because if I come back here and look at sales rank, I think it was different. No, it wasn't either. Yeah, the sales rank is showing uh, seven hundred twenty-one thousand here, so it is it is quite a bit different. But notice it's just one one straight line, which is kind of odd. I'm just wondering if this might be just a brand new book that is just being released. Um, so looking at that and seeing that the the low price on this is one penny, and there's not a lot of books listed. You know, look at this. There's only one, two, three, four. There's only five of them listed at all, and there's no FBA, and the lowest one is is a penny. Then the reason uh, the reason I put this on my list is you know for a penny plus three ninety nine shipping this is just a good risk you know because it's sort of one of those where you can't really tell what the ranking's been um, so maybe it's a new book maybe there's something special about it but for five bucks you know it's a it's just a good risk uh, especially since there's no FBA so you can price this book as high as you want to. Well, actually, no. It's got uh, sixty-three twenty-five is the the Amazon price, but it's showing temporarily out of stock. So even then, I would price this book at ninety-nine ninety-nine. Okay, so that one's sort of a little bit of a different one. All right, next one. Um, all right, and this one also temporarily out of stock uh, on Amazon. So if we look at the, Amazon showing a price of $50, but they're out of stock. Low price is one penny. And if we look at, I'm going to go back and look at the bestseller rank. It's right now at 677,000. Um, there's the keep a box. And it only has 51 days of history. So that's telling me this is probably a brand new release. And look how look how it tremendously dropped all of a sudden right here. You know, it went from being five million all the way down here to five hundred fifty thousand. So that's telling me maybe it's one that's starting to sell right now, um, in anticipation of textbook season. But again, this one for like a penny plus three ninety nine shipping, it's just a good, it's a good risk. You're not going to lose a whole lot with that one. 
All right, now let's get to one that's more of a regular one. All right, uh, analysis three, third edition text and readings and mathematics. Okay, so this one, the cover price is sixty nine ninety nine. It's showing eight eighty four new and used, and there's thirty five offers. But if I look at the FBA, the lowest one is sixty nine ninety nine, and that is Amazon. Oh, and this this was the one I was trying to I was, I was going to show you. It says this item has not been released yet, but yet you can buy it right here. So looks like maybe it's been released in other areas. This one here says it's an international edition, so I wouldn't touch that one. Uh, I would make sure this one isn't international. You know, maybe message the buy the seller just to see. All right, and I've got one more here. Again, this was in the mathematics category, mathematics of juggling, uh, forty-nine ninety-five, and the lowest price one is seven fifty plus three ninety-nine. Looks like it's in good condition. Look at the FBA, the lowest one. There's only one, and it's Amazon. Forty nine ninety five, and the best seller rank on this one is nine hundred ninety one thousand right now. But I'm bringing up the chart here. Trying to bring it up. It's a little slow. There it comes. All right, as you can see, so it's it's selling all year long. You can see that you know it's it's having a sell about what every every couple of weeks or so. But then right here, you can see how there's multiple sales right here. Boom, 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 boom. All right, and since there's no other FBA offers out there, I think that's a great that's a great um, arbitrage. Okay, um, how did you find religious books? Look in the religious category. I mean, there's category for it. Just, just browse through it. This is helpful to see how you navigate and how you decide on books and risk. All right, great, Carlos. Glad you like that. Can you show us in slow motion where you were going to get sales rank? Yeah, there's actually a couple different places. Um, first off, I've got the Keepa, the Keepa plugin, which generates this chart. All right, and over here on the right hand side, and if you're using Keepa, your Keepa may be not looking like mine. So let me show you how. Let me show you what settings I have on mine. All right, so I'm going to go here and click on Options because I did adjust my settings a little bit. Taking a while to come up. Okay, so these are my options in Keepa. So graphs to show. I've got the default Amazon. The range is. I changed this to one year. All right. So I think it's 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 uh, defaults at three months. I changed it to one year. Um, what else did I change? Nothing here. Nothing here. Right here, keep a box horizontal size. I changed mine to full window width. That way you get a, a wider view. Under default view, I changed this from keep a box to button. And the reason I did that is because if you have it set on keep a box, and every time you go to that page, it's going to redraw that graph, and it slows your, your browser down. If you have the button, then it just means you click the button in order to get the graph. Uh, show desktop notifications. I don't even know what this is. It's just the default. Uh, everything else is just the default. 
Okay, so if you want, I'll just take a picture of this, or you can do you can do it yourself on your um, go to webinar. You can click on it to take a picture of this, so you'll know what the settings are. I'll just go ahead and do that. to include in the mind map. All right, so those are my settings. All right, so we're coming back here. Um, let me reload this page. Okay, so when I first land on a page, it doesn't show anything. I have to click on show keep a box. Once I click on that, then it draws the chart. It's right here. And then sales rank is this green, green one right here. And you can see in that little information bubble, you can see what the sales rank is on each one of these uh, graph legs. All right, so on February the 26th, 2000, um, 2016, the sales rank was 295,388. All right, so that's how you read that. Now, you can also get the current bestseller rank right from the book listing itself. It's under product details and then Amazon bestseller rank and it's this one right here. You always use the one that's just in the books department. The ones down here don't give you, it doesn't give you enough information. You need the one here. And it's always going to be higher. This is 991,000. Um, because even though this might look good, 50, this is 54 in books, science and math, mathematics, infinity. Well, there's probably not a whole lot of books in there to begin with. So it's not going to take a lot to be number one bestseller in infinity. So that's why we always look, look in the main category of books. And that's what this chart represents, the chart that I have here. This chart has been um, has been gauged to the book category. Okay, does that answer your question, uh, Ed and Frank? Should I ignore older edition opportunities? It really depends on, because most of the older ones are going to have a different ISBN number, um, but it really depends on your sales rank for that edition and what it's done in the past, what the sales have been in the past. Yeah, ED, the product detail, ED and Frank, the product details on every single product you go to on Amazon, just scroll down and you'll see product details. If for some reason there's not a bestseller rank here, it means that particular product has never sold a single time. You'll see that occasionally. There's nothing there, it just hasn't sold. This bestseller rank is literally the best selling rank for that product. For instance, uh, the number one bestseller is going to be number one right here. The number two bestseller is going to be number two, et cetera, et cetera. And this number is calculated by Amazon several times a day. All right, great. Glad you understand that. Uh, okay, so uh, about the storage fees. Is it when I send the book in or the calendar year? Um, it's, it's both. Let me explain. Let me try to explain. Amazon only assesses storage fees twice a year. They assess them in February and they assess them in August. So in February, they're going to look at all your books and they're going to say, which of these books have been in the warehouse for at least six months. That book will get the storage fee. And then in August, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to say, okay, it's August now of 2017. Which of these books have been in the warehouse for six months or longer? Okay. 
Why do you often see people selling the used book for more than the new one? Is there a good reason for this? You know, when I've seen that in the past, it has almost always been that there is getting ready to be a huge demand for that book. I think it's because the used sellers are more savvy, uh, and they know that for whatever reason that book is going to to go up in value. Oh, uh, Clarence said, I guess I missed the part where you said not to buy from FBA. I cover that in the very first class. Um, but yeah, just sell it on eBay. Okay, and Joseph, I'm reading your response about that. I'll email you about that. Uh, Edie says, my homepage doesn't look like yours. It doesn't have the categories you have added at the bottom. I have download video and Keepa. Is there something I need to do? Yeah, send me a screenshot. That would be much easier. And while we're talking about that, uh, let me show you how a tool that you can use to do screenshots. Um, it's called Jing, and it's by TechSmith. Okay, yeah, it's www.techsmith.com, and then it's under Products, and then All Products and Downloads. They've really hidden this thing because it's a real gem and it's absolutely free. All right, so it's right here. It's Gene, free download. And what that does is it allows you to do a on-the-fly screenshot or even a video. And then instead of having to attach an, the image to an email, it gives you a link. And you just send me that link, and I can click that link and see the screenshot. It's really cool. All right, so you can download it from there uh, when you need to send me a screenshot. Uh, what do you make of a book that Amazon doesn't have a price for? Same book has used an FBA, but no Amazon. It's just a book that Amazon isn't selling for whatever reason. Uh, it, maybe it's a book that is no longer being published. Does every book need to be relabeled? Um, I wouldn't call it relabeling. It's actually just labeling. And yes, the only exception is if you're selling new books. You can use the existing barcode that's on the product, but most of the books you're going to have are going to be used. Um, and also, you can't mix shipments. You can't have a box with some books that you label and some books that use the, the barcode. Okay, So you might as well just either label them all yourself or have Amazon do it. Okay. Um If there is no ships from in the delivery column of offers, does that mean anything in specific? Um, no, I don't believe so. And I've gone through, I've tried to figure out how you would tell if a book is being shipped from an international location, and I haven't figured it out yet. Um, of course, you can always just message the seller. And, and by the way, when you message a seller, they are required by Amazon to reply within 24 hours. And it doesn't matter. Weekends don't matter. Holidays don't matter. Amazon says if you're if you're selling, then you need to respond. So that's that's what they say to, to sellers. Um, uh, 
How many books would you say we recommend we buy for our first listings? Um, as many as you can get, you know, at, at a whatever. I'm going to say as many as you can without going over whatever arbitrary budget you have in your mind. Like if you say, all right, I don't want to spend any more than $200 on books. I mean, that's what I, that's how I would approach it. I would say this is how much I am willing to invest in this right now. And then don't go, don't go over that number. Any reason some sellers outrageously price their books? I saw one for $1,500, but it's selling for $100 new. Um, in some cases, it's because uh, they're using automated pricing software, and it's triggering off of somebody else's price, and it gets into like an infinite loop where they just battle each other, and the price uh, either goes up or goes down based off of the other seller. I've seen that happen many. I actually saw a book one time. There was a um, this became like a viral thing. A book got up, got up to like seven million dollars because it was using some type of automated software and it got out of control. Um, that or it's someone who legitimately thinks that that book is going to sell for fifteen hundred dollars. I have n don't think I've seen one sell that high, although I have seen books sell for five hundred dollars before. Uh, Steve said another good screen capture program is Tiny Taker. Okay, Tiny Taker. I haven't seen that one. I'd like to because I've been using Gene for so long. Taker. Hmm, I'm not seeing that. I don't think it's Tumblr. So if you got a URL, type it in, Stephen. I'll put it in here. What labels or stickers should be removed before shipping used books to Amazon? I'm referring to tools listed. Yeah, that's a great question, Marilyn. Um, I remove any current price stickers. So if there is a, a sticker with you know the retail price, remove that. On textbooks, Sometimes, especially used textbooks uh, that you would buy from uh, like a local area or local store, on the back cover, there might be a sticker with the barcode that's all that's on top of the regular barcode. I always peel those off too. I might have missed it, but what's the highest amount you sold a book for? $499. Okay, tiny take, not taker. Okay. There it is. Best free screen, a Windows screen capture and video recording. All right, cool. So there's another option for you. If you don't like uh, Jing, then it's tinytake.com. Okay, so let me go over a little bit of the coming classes. Upcoming classes. So I'm going to have a, a bonus session that I'm calling Extra Profits from Christmas Sales. And I'm actually, we don't have a class scheduled until January the sixth due to the holidays but I'm trying to get this one scheduled for either the 29th or 30th I'm trying to, to get a I'm trying to book an expert that does this I do this some as well but I, um, I there's a couple of people that, that really specialize in this sort of thing so I'm trying to get them booked to do a special bonus session on either December the 29th or 30th and I know that's holiday season and everybody's busy it'll be recorded don't worry you can't make it live um, we're doing another class on what I call the stealthy cross-market arbitrage. Um, so Beverly, I think, asked me, someone asked me the highest price book. This is how I sold that book. 
um, these, what I call the stealthy cross-market arbitrage. Uh, I call it stealthy because, you know, with arbitrage, pretty much anybody can see the prices of books. And if you know what you're looking for, then, um, you know, there's no big secret about which books sell well. But with the stealthy cross-market arbitrage, it's definitely something that uh, you've got to know about in order to do it. So there's not a ton of competition. I'll teach that in uh, upcoming class. Uh, another one that I'm going to be doing is outsourcing the outsourcing strategy. So you can outsource a huge portion of this business to someone else and have them locate the books for you. All right, we're also adding something called trading books for cash. Right now, you can sell books or you can exchange books to Amazon for gift card or gift card balance. Well, we're getting ready to start a program where we're going to do the same thing, except you can just trade in your books for cash. So instead of sending your books into Amazon to sell, then you send them to my warehouse, and we will pay you cash immediately for them. Now, obviously, we're not going to pay you the, the fulfilled by Amazon price. We'll pay you a price that's comparable to Amazon's trade-in value, maybe a little bit more, but it will be in cash and not in uh, balance. So that's coming very soon, and that's coming in conjunction with the software release, which we've gotten lots of feedback from you guys about what you want in the software. So we're developing software that will help you to find arbitrage opportunities. Uh, another session we have planned is called Profiting Between Textbook Seasons. So how do you take advantage of the book market when it's not textbook season? You know, when it's uh, like February, March, April, May, June, how do you how do you work that? So that's going to be another another session, um, another session on little known online arbitrage marketplaces, and another session on preparing for the summer textbook season. So another question that someone asked a couple of people actually is, you know, do we get access to any of the classes you do after after this textbook season? Yes, you get access to anything we do in this in this universe of textbook arbitrage. All right, and you will get one year access to the software that we're developing as well. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, so I will get in touch with you via email about the upcoming bonus class on extra profits after or from after Christmas sales. Uh, as soon as I get that booked, um, hopefully it will be on December the 29th or 30th, but if not, I'll let you know. Okay, and Edie and Frank said, uh, how do we find out about the extra bonuses that Steve and Aiden promised? Uh, if you don't have those, I can, I can send them to you as well. Uh, just um, instead of submitting a question about that, just send me an email at james at thenetresults.com. Okay, so if you don't have the bonuses that Aiden offered, then go ahead and send me an email at that email address. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i be checking that email address tonight, okay? But I've gotten to the point where I'm only checking email about twice a week now. So if you have a regular question, then use our question form because I'm checking that every single day, okay? But tonight I'll be going through my emails, so if you uh, have something you want to send to that email address, you can. I just put it into into chat. Everybody should have it. Let me put it in there again. It's James at the net results dot com. Okay, and I'll have the recording of this ready by tomorrow and everything into the members area. So thanks for coming. I hope you have a great week, and I'll talk to you uh, very soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Merry Christmas.